Hello and welcome to the second video in this series where I'm going to put RD Pilot onto a Matek F405 wing board. This is what it looks like at the end of the video. So I'll show you how we've got all this together uh, inside an AR wing. Now, the previous build that I did with RD Pilot on an omnibus flight controller has been fantastic. If you are coming into this uh, series and you've never watched anything about RD Pilot on non Pixhawk based flight controllers before, go and have a look at that series. I've already done it once and it's the reason I'm doing it with the Matek in a much larger wing because it has been a fabulous experience. There's no other way to put it. Last time I did the introduction, so this time we're going to do a couple of things. First of all, we're going to flash the hardware with RD Pilot so that it has the software on here ready. Again, it's a relatively straightforward and easy process. If you flashed firmware from uh, iNav or Betaflight or something onto a flight controller, it's exactly the same process. Once the software is on here, then we're going to look at how you connect up both the GPS and also the external compass so that we can get the heading. I am going to connect the compass again. Uh, you can do RG Pilot without a compass, but then that to me is kind of defeating the object of the exercise in a bigger wing there's loads of places that you can put a compass that'll be out of the way of problems and for the testing on the bench i'm going to just use an x8r receiver from freesky and that is going to give us the s bus connection to just make sure everything is all working there in the next video i'm going to show you a couple of tricks with crossfire um, particularly with the nano i'm going to use an immortal t antenna with a nano and i'm going to use the little daughter board that's going to allow me to output four pwm pins one of them is going to be used for s bus and then that also gives us a couple of extra things for plug and play now the board at the start of this is looking very naked this is how we had it last time and i've not done anything to it at all there's no soldering or anything now, the first thing that I would recommend that you do is plug the flight controller in before you do anything at all into iNav or Betaflight. Make sure that you can get a connection and make sure you can go into the CLI and type version and just see which version you've got. Now, the 405 has been around for a long time. The current version of the configurator for iNav that I have is uh, only really going to support version 2.0 and later. So unfortunately, it doesn't want to talk to this, but I can see that the flight controller is working. So with that in mind, I'm going to flash it with the firmware for ArduPilot. Now where you need to go, you need to go to firmware.ardupilot.org and click on, uh, there's all these different types, plane, copter, whatever. We're obviously looking for plane as it's going to go into a fixed wing. And there's lots of different directors in here. The latest one, for example, is going to give you the very latest version of the code. That's not the one that I'm interested in. I am going to download stable. And the version of the file that I want is ArduPlane with bl.hex. You want to right click and save that onto your computer because that's the file that we're going to save onto the flight controller using the iNav or Betaflight standard flashing tools. Now, the other files in there are for when you might want to update it through Machine Planner. Uh, but for now, we want the version that's got the with BL. That's actually the bootloader that will boot it into ArduPlane and allow us to do stuff later on. So once we've done this initial flash with iNav or Betaflight, then we're in good shape. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to then go into iNav and we're going to flash it just like any other flight controller. So go into the firmware flasher, make sure you've got full chip array selected, load the firmware locally, pick the file that you've just saved. I just renamed it with a different ending so I can keep track of which ones were which, and then click on flash firmware. If it doesn't work, do the standard stuff with Zadeg or your favorite driver fixer, and the file will flash okay. Once it's all flashed, the next thing to do is to start up Mission Planner and then click on connect. And if everything works, you'll get all these get params and everything will appear. And it's all very basic stuff at this point. Nothing is uh, really set up. But the fact that it's connected, that we can see as I move the board around, the artificial horizon is moving, is a really good sign. Ardu Pilot is now running 
on this little flight controller. That is brilliant. Now we can't do anything else because we don't have any pins on here. So the next job then is to go and spend a happy 30 minutes installing all of the pins. Now you could direct solder here, but I'm not going to do that. In fact, when I used one of these flight controllers with iNav in my TBS Kaipeina wing, I did direct solder. But this one, because I'm going to be exploring and playing with telemetry, I want it a little bit more plug and play. So everything that's ground is going to be black, everything that's going to provide voltage is going to be red, and everything that's signal is going to be white, and that's going to make things an awful lot easier. The other thing I'm going to do, because with the F405 it only supplies the power to the receiver and other pieces when it's plugged into a battery, I'm also going to temporarily pop on a little pigtail so I can plug in a 3S LiPo battery to power it as well to make sure that it's okay. Now that's done, we just need to figure out how we're going to connect up the compass, external GPS, and where we're going to plug the SBUS pieces into. Now in the Ardu Pilot documentation, uh, there is only listed where the GPS is going to plug into the four wires from the GPS, a ground plus five volts, uh, transmit and receive, and also the two I squared C pins from the external compass. So the first thing I need to do, I need to figure out which wires are which. I'm going to take the back off this compass and have a look brilliant thing about these little compasses is it actually has written which all the wires are so I can see exactly which color is which. That allows me to crimp some ends onto those connections and plug them in as per the diagram in the Ardu Pilot Wiki. Next thing we need to do is plug the receiver, uh, the SBUS input from the X8R that I've got set up into the SBUS connection and that should be all the connections made. Now before we plug the battery in for the first time I would triple check that you have everything where you think you do, that all the ground wires are connected to the ground pins, the positive wires, the voltage wires are connected to the voltage pins, vice versa. It can cause you a bit of heartache if things like signal wires are the wrong way around, but if power wires are the wrong way around, things can get very exciting. So do one last visual inspection. I just check the resistance across that little XT60 pigtail just to make sure that there's no dead shorts, and then it's a case of powering everything up. And it's always a welcome sight when you see the LEDs come on inside the GPS, the little blue one, and the little green status in the X8R as well. Now, the radio itself, all I've done in the radio is I've created a standard model, uh, reversed the elevator as normal in an RD pilot build, and added channel 8 to be my mode switch. So now it's all working, we can jump into Ardu Pilot and we can go through the very basic settings just to make sure that everything is going to work and that not only is power working, but the signals are good too. So here we are connected, which is really good. We've got loads of errors and we can see we've got a 3D fix in the top left hand corner where it says disarmed. So that looks really promising for the GPS. So the thing we're gonna run through very quickly on the bench is through the initial setup, just to make sure that everything's happy before we go and try and put this into a model. So I'm gonna click on accelerometer calibration and I'm gonna put the board in each orientation and every time I do it, just following the instructions on screen, I'm gonna click done. So just work your way through, maybe place it on its right hand side, click done, place it on nose down position. Now some of this might be a bit tricky, it's good to have something to be able to lean the board against. Um, because of the th kind of three tier construction, it allows you to easily get on each side, but when you've got things like the pigtail attached, you kind of have to have it against something for this all to work. Place the vehicle on its back, I'm kind of guessing this one, hold it completely still when we press done and the calibration is successful. Now that's really good. That means that the accelerometers and gyros and stuff are happy. Put the board level on the table and we're gonna click calibrate level. We'll probably come back to that later uh, to just to make sure it's okay. Not changing anything on here. I'm just gonna click calibrate compass with live calibration. And then I'm just gonna move the compass around on the bench. We'll probably end up having to do this again when everything is inside the AR wing. But this is just to prove that the I squared C connection's working, the compass is happy, and I don't have an issue. Next job then is radio calibration. So we're gonna move the sticks on the radio so the throttle is working, that's really promising. Now we're gonna go and calibrate the radio. So you see the middle channel values aren't exactly 1500, but it doesn't matter with this technology, it'll figure that out. So ensure the transmitter's on, move the sticks to their extent, 
And so move all of the gimbals to the top left hand corner, bottom right hand corner, move them all the way around the outside. Also flick the switches that are on the radio. Now I've got a couple set up here, but normally you just set up a three position switch for channel eight and that will give you access to three flight modes. Move everything around, make sure you're completely happy, put everything in the bottom position and then say click when done and then you'll see all the channel values. So that's done too. Next thing to do is to decide what the servo outputs are going to be. This is a really powerful way to configure the outputs here. Um, this is probably one of my favorite ways in all the different technology that I've played with. So you don't have to tell it whether you want a plane, whether you want a wing, whether you've got a V-tail. You just pick where you want everything to be presented. So I'm going to select servo one as elevon right. I'm going to select servo two, the middle output. I'm going to select that as the throttle. And then I'm also going to select Elevon left for Servo 3 and then just disable the rudder. We're not going to need that. So that's where everything's going to plug in. Next thing is going to be flight modes. So just flick the mode switch on your radio and uh, just select which you're going to need. Now I'm going to have a manual mode in case when we do the maiden something is horribly wrong. I can put it into manual mode and uh, bring it back to myself. Fly by wire A is by far my favorite mode so we definitely need that. I like to have a circle mode, I like to have return to home and things as well, uh, but how you set it up is very much up to you. But I would recommend for the initial test you have manual and fly-by-wire A available. Once you're happy with how it's all set, click on save modes. Now failsafe is something that we'll come back to later when we've got the crossfire in here. The hardware ID, there's all the different pieces inside everything looks really, really happy. So I am pleased here that the hardware and the technology and everything that we've plugged together, the GPS, the compass and the receiver are working fine. Last job then is to figure out where everything is going to fit inside the wing. Now we have lots and lots of space inside this AR wing. I haven't included anything in yet. Obviously we've got a place for the run cam camera, that's going to be obvious. Uh, this little board here fits beautifully under the run cam 5, which is the one I'm going to use in the front. I'm going to install these cheap pieces as well, just to make sure that that's not going to fall out. Uh, so that's going to need to be glued. The next thing then is... which. How's this going to fit? Let me just uh, move some of the wires out of the way. So it's going to have to go in like that, that way round. So the all the servo connections and GPS connections at the front, there's absolutely tons of room. That means that probably having the compass away from the cameras and things is probably a good idea. So that can probably go out on that wing. Um, we're not going to be using this receiver when in the next video we're going to replace it with the crossfire and the immortal t antenna is probably going to go here across the top of the motor so then maybe the fpv antenna be over here out of the way uh, i just need to make sure that the compass isn't getting interfered with now i need to figure out where the esc is going to go there's a lot of room in front of the motor so i could probably squeeze that in there um and that should all fit. Okay, that's looking promising. Next thing to do then is use my little trick with the, the compass that's probably in the drawer from when you were in the brownies or the cubs and get the model and just move it around under the compass. And you're looking to make sure that the compass isn't deflected. As I move it towards the servo, you'll notice that it swings around a little bit. Uh, and that's all of the motors inside the servo. There is tons of room and probably here is gonna be a great spot to mount the compass on the top of the wing and this cable that's already connected to it might actually work really well because what I could do is bring the cable out underneath and then uh, just cut a little channel, run the cable into the body of the, the model and that would work really nicely. Okay, so we have software on it, we, have, we know that everything's working. So join me in the next video where we'll get hold of the Crossfire system, we'll set that up and plug that in, and we'll start building out the wing and putting all these pieces into place. 
Thanks for watching the video and watching right to the very end. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you like the video and like what I'm doing here, then hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification icon too. If you really like what I'm doing, you can go the extra mile and become one of my Patreons for access to me directly for support and also giveaways and regular updates too. If you're looking for particular content, then check out the playlist. I organize all of my videos into playlists. So if you're looking for a particular topic, you can find everything here. If it's called Introduction To, it's designed to start very simply and build on that simple introduction to teach you all about it. If it's called For Beginners, then that is really aimed at people who are brand new to that part of the hobby. You can also search on YouTube for anything that you're interested in using the search function at the top. So iNav Painless 360 will find all of my videos and even the playlists around iNav. So thanks again for watching and happy flying.